to believe in the resurrection was not that easy for the apostles and the disciples. Even though Jesus rose from the dead. It's like yesterday I sent a message in our parish WhatsApp groups stating that at least say three Hail Marys and pray for protection from coronavirus and pray to St. Joseph as this year is dedicated to St. Joseph so that we are protected. Well, my dear friends, when such things are informed, sometimes we take it seriously. We definitely want to say three Hail Marys to be protected. Every day say three Hail Marys and be protected from coronavirus. And some of us will say, oh, that is no problem. I have already taken vaccination and I'm sure I will not get. But that will be in their mind that we have to say three Hail Marys. Because when there is something attached to a spirituality or for a spiritual practice, then automatically that will be behind our mind. Yes, I must say three Hail Marys. And so, in case tomorrow you are tested as positive, then some of you will say, I think I did not say that we hail Marys. And some of you will say, well, I said, but why this positive? There's always this problem in our minds, having that doubt whether this practice of three hail Marys would definitely protect us or not whether it is going to give us a remedy or not. But that will always be behind our mind. This is the exact situation that the apostles and the disciples met. Jesus kept on telling them that I will die and rise on the third day and I am the resurrection and the life. And he goes on telling them all this and they have it behind their mind that Jesus is going to rise from the dead. But when he was crucified on the cross, a shameful death, they did not believe. Everything went off. But that was there behind their mind. Yes, he told. He told. And when the women came and surprised them that he is risen, he is going to meet us in Galilee, then they realized, yes, he told us. So it is true. So you see, very often, we are caught up in this part. The first question that comes into our mind when something like death happens, after death, why was I frightened? Many of us, when we go through some death in the family or our near and dear one, we always ask the question, why was I so frightened about it? Because very often, people recall their soul outside their body. And the disciples were just the same. They recall their soul outside their body. Therefore, they cannot really grasp the resurrection. There is the wisdom of a monk who said, death is nothing more than God's manner of recycling. It is nothing. Death is nothing but God's way of recycling our life. So we must surrender ourselves into the hands of the Lord who is the resurrection. But sleep, many people tackle sleep. College students would always tackle sleep. They say, let us go party. Let us enjoy life. Many of us will always say, anyhow, we have only one life to live. Let us all enjoy. What about your sleep? Oh, all through night we are going to enjoy. Sleep, we will sleep in the cemetery once and for all. And we think that is true. Forgetting about our eternal sleep. The resurrected Christ in today's gospel reading is constantly on the go from Jerusalem to Amos, from Amos to Galilee, from Galilee back to the disciples, showing that after resurrection, he is quite busy. Why? To show
show that he is the resurrection and the life. It is also not surprising, though Jesus himself said, I am the resurrection and the life. But he did not say, I am the resurrection and the rest. The rest is not possible for us. The rest will be only when we are resting in peace. Therefore, he says very clearly, I am the resurrection and the life, not rest. There is no need of any ambitious thoughts that I'm going to rest in peace. No. But he's going to give you resurrection from this life. The new life that Jesus wants to tell you through his resurrection is that you will find in his own uh, life after resurrection there is no anger in him, there is no angry words, there is no such tension in his mind, there are no one revolting or opposing him, there are no more enemies who want to again put him to death, there is no one. Totally a different scenario after the resurrection, that he is totally a free person. It's like the night and day difference from the pre-resurrected Christ. Why? Because now he has conquered sin and death. Nothing can bind him or confine him to any place. That is how after resurrection he is like a free bird. And he wants to tell each and every one of you the same. But what are we? We want to be saints. Yes. We want to be saints. But we don't want to miss out on any of any sensational that any sinner can experience. We all love to be saints. But we also love to have that sensational of any sinner. We want to be truthful to the marriage or fidelity in marriage but we want to also flirt with every attractive person who comes around your life and therefore you want to be true to your wife or true to your husband but at the same time when there is something nice you start flirting. We want to be good parents but we don't want to make the sacrifice of certain demands especially the terms of our children's career. We want to have deep roots in Christ, but we don't want to forego the intoxication that comes to stimulate our desires in our lives. And it makes us feel that, yes, I want to take deep roots, but there are so many things in this world that are attracting, and I get attracted to those more than the deep roots that I want to take in Jesus. We want to be stable with our friendships, but we don't want duties and obligations and responsibilities tying us down or pinning us down. In short, my dear friends, we want love, but not at the cost of obedience to death. This is what Jesus has taught us very clearly. That you need everything and therefore you also need to be a person who can give your life in perfect obedience. Therefore Jesus very clearly says, what is daily resurrection? He comes to his disciples moving from one place to another, telling them about his resurrection. He wants to tell them, resurrection is nothing but a type of where there is no more feeling of oppression or fear. Every form of death can never be overcome. Therefore, in the resurrection, we are assured that there are no more doors closing about our face. Every time we close a door, there is another door opened by Jesus. Therefore, resurrection is nothing but if one door is closed, the other door is open. The resurrection reassures God never gives up in us, even though we give up ourselves. He doesn't want to give up on you. 
and very clear in and through the resurrection god wants to write in our crooked lives exactly what you and i can reorganize our body become a virgin again regain lost innocence become post sophisticated in our way of being daily and move beyond bitterness finally it all will end in the manner of well being including our lives eventually resurrection is nothing but the sunny side of our life the beautiful side of our life however there is a challenge in our lives my dear friends that when we are believing in jesus and this physical life for that he got out from the grave and perhaps more important to believe no matter our age the mistakes the betrayals the wounds and the debts that we can go through each time no matter what we have done our failures forever are pregnant with wonderful new possibilities because jesus is there to forgive all your failures it's pregnant with new possibilities in our lives therefore resurrection is nothing but something new that is going to happen resurrection is not just a question of one day after the death of rising of jesus from the dead but it is a daily rising from the mini graves that we have created within ourselves there are many graves that we have created created in our lives therefore i need to rise every day from the little mini graves that i have made for myself so that i may experience that resurrection of christ therefore within ourselves we find caught up in so many problems but we have to rise out of these problems we i have to rise from these mini graves how can i know now like the apostles to believe in the resurrection and in the little mini graves that i have created that i have to rise out of it because we are all human when there is something suddenly happening in our lives we give up our spirituality we give up this we give up that and we are again very in to our own way of living like jesus we too may have certain crucifixions in our lives more than one grave awaits for us but we are not going to give up as john cia said what the resurrection teaches us is not how to live but how to live again and again and again finally my dear friends we do not know what kind of body we will have but there is a strong hint that st paul gives us in the letter to philemon chapter 3 verse 21 the lord will transform our lowly bodies into copies of his own body look at that Christ that he places on our body that he is going to make copies out of our body like that of his body 